You know, a lot of guys my age drink way too much coffee. It's not hard to figure out. If you haven't had a good night's sleep since 1991, or if you hear something humming and then you realize it's you, or if you can't afford to be anywhere where they don't have bathrooms or trees, well, maybe it's time to cut down on your coffee intake. Now, my wife suggests that I should drink tea instead. Yeah, right. Maybe I should take up dancing lessons and learn how to knit. <laughs> oh, no. The answer is just to give up coffee, but that could be tough to do. Anybody who's tried to cut down or lives with somebody who's tried knows that a morning without coffee is kind of like a hockey game without a fight. <laughs> what you need is some intermediate step to take you from too much coffee or to no coffee at all. So grab yourself a strip off the old handyman secret rehab. You want to lay that down on your workbench or your dining room table or what have you, sticky side up. Then you want to take some of your favorite blend, sprinkle that right on there. Okay. Now what you've done, you've made a caffeine patch. Okay. You stick that on your arm, and now the caffeine will be released from the instant coffee directly into your into your into your bloodstream, and you're and you're well on your way to being off the stuff completely. kind of a research project all week. He wants us to find something interesting in the history of the lodge that we can use to attract tourists. You know, I, I kind of hope that by this point, uh, we'd have built up a clientele of regular customers, but so far, the only repeat business we've had is one guy who came back with a search warrant because he dropped his Ray-Bans down the two-holer. Uncle Ray! Uncle Ray! Uncle Ray! Look what I found! 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 False teeth. Yeah. They're made out of wood. Yeah. I think they belong to George Washington. These can be over like 200 years old. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah. yeah. Those, those are old man Sedgwick's teeth. <laughs> oh! What the, he has wooden teeth? Yeah, you know, he says they're quieter. He likes to eat corn chips in the library. <laughs> what is he, what is, why does he leave them at the lodge? Well, you, you know, it was, it was Mexican night and the food was so spicy he was afraid they'd kind of burst into flame on him there. And, <laughs> Of course, nobody wants him shooting his mouth off, you know. <laughs> but don't worry, Harold. There's your tourist magnet right there. Uncle Red, you think people are going to come to the lodge to see a paddle? Well, it's not just any paddle, Harold. Look at the lines on there, see? Age seven, age seven and a half, age eight, age eight and a half, age nine, age, age nine. nine. How can I get it? Yes, yeah. yes, it's a stick marking some kid's height, so what? Not just any kid, Harold. A famous member of the Green family. Ooh. Ever heard of Lauren Green? <laughs> yeah. Right? There's Lauren up there. And I figure he was uh, Grandpa Green's second cousin by a previous marriage and a prior commitment. <laughs> so I figure this paddle proves that the famous Lauren Green is a relative of ours and stayed right here at Possum Lodge. Wow. Yeah. The real Lauren Green. Yeah. Green with the extra E on the end of it. Unlike the unfamous Red Green who has no extra anything. <laughs> Anywhere. Harold, you know, when people go into show business, they change their name. He added an E, Harold, okay? So I figure that we can uh, change Possum Lodge into an attraction based on Lauren Green, just like Dolly Parton did with Dollywood. <laughs> well, Dolly Parton has two things you don't have. <laughs> <laughs> Brains and money. <laughs> it's the Possum Lodge Weekend! Today's winner receives a coupon for a free oil change and cheeseburger from Mechanics. Awesome Lake's first drive through car repair shop and fast food restaurant. Home of the slogan, do you want tires with that? Uh, okay, uh, cover your... Oh, oh never mind. Uh, uh, Mr. Green, you got 30 seconds to get Edgar to say this word. Care... <laughs> Careless. All right, Mike. And go! Okay, Edgar, okay, if you work with C4, this is what you don't want to be. 
in the same county. <laughs> that stuff will blow your clothes right off. I've seen me running back to your truck with nothing but a, a little plunger in front of me and, <laughs> and hoping that the smoke would hold out. Okay, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. Uh, when a guy works with explosives, but he makes a lot of mistakes, what would you call him? Lefty. <laughs> Okay, Edgar, when someone does what you do for a living, this is something they can't afford to be. Insured? <laughs> if somebody calls you incompetent, dangerous, and reckless, that means you're... Back in front of the licensing board again. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. When a man is not careful, he's... Married. <laughs> We're almost out of time, Mr. Green. Yeah, well, you know, Edgar, I, I think that cheeseburger is just flying away on you here. Oh, big deal with my cholesterol. I could care less. His name is Rothschild, Winston Rothschild. When your tank goes bad and starts to lose, you need a man with rubber shoes. Rothschild. Child. He has real nice clothes, but he's hard on the nose. Still, he's the one that we all chose, because you know for sure you'll never get hosed with Rothschild, Winston Rothschild. When your lawn's all muck and you know you're stuck, you need a guy who's a world-class suck. Rothschild, Winston Rothschild. I'm going to go a different way with the handyman corner this time. I thought I would take a normal problem and demonstrate how the true handyman uses ingenuity and persistence to overcome any obstacles. You know, the same approach would bring success in your personal or professional lives, too, but I, I find that stuff pretty boring. So what we have here is a flat tire with some pretty rusty lugs on there. Okay, now, I started with brute force there, because that's always the shortest way home. But when brute force fails, what you have to do is go with more brute force. <laughs> but this time, we're going to add a little science in there. The law of the lever, which is not, if you don't love her, leave her. <laughs> I'm talking about the extra torque you get whenever you extend the handle of your tool. guys would quit at this point, but then they're not me. And we all feel pretty good about that. We're going to give up on brute force. We're going to switch over to technology. This here is an impact wrench. It uses compressed air to do the work for you. See that back there. You know, a handyman losing his temper is the reason we have hospitals. But <laughs> well, look at how I haven't let this thing beat me. See, I took the socket off the impact bench, stuck it onto the wheel, onto the wheel nut there, and then I welded this end of the pipe onto the socket. And now to give me the extra power to loosen this baby off, I attach the other end of this pipe to the drive shaft of this car. <laughs> now she's only 200 horse, but I figure in reverse she'll have enough power to fire those nuts off no problem. And then when it comes time to tighten them back on, well, I can put it in drive, and I got three speeds to choose from. <laughs> the important life lesson here is you don't ever give up, you don't ever give in, and most importantly, you don't ever read the owner's manual. <laughs> so remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs> your left hand thread. <laughs> Most 
Most men are not naturally neat. We can't help it, it's genetic. See, women have the two X chromosomes, that's a match set, okay? We have an X and a Y. As far as we're concerned, anything goes with anything. In fact, making a mess is how the human male marks his territory. And when you think about it, it's, it's a lot better than the way we used to do it. The point is, all your life, you've thrived on chaos. Remember your first apartment? Remember the first time your mother dropped in on your first apartment? Remember how she fainted? And her fall was broken by those empty pizza boxes? Enough said. But lately, you've had strange stirrings, haven't you? Hmm? Unfamiliar yearnings, like when you're walking by the shed, you start thinking, you know, I should clean that up. Or you're thinking, landscaping would make this place a lot homier. I know it's scary, but don't panic. It's a natural part of the maturing process. See, you finally come to the age where you've acquired all the territory you're going to conquer. <laughs> it's not going to get any bigger. Maybe you can get it organized. <laughs> it's not because your wife has finally managed to take over your mind while you were sleeping. <laughs> now, if you're smart, you'll accept that now you're a neater person. And if you're really smart, you'll let your wife think you're doing it for her. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. When a strong blast of methane burns the hair from your nose, when it weakens your knees and buckles your toes, when there's a rising damp on your lawn and your clothes, you'll wish that Rothschild sewage had been the sucker you chose. <laughs> Why, this uh, Lauren Green idea is really starting to take shape, you know? All the years we struggled to build our own popularity, and all we really had to do was steal somebody else's. <laughs> in order to cash in on Lauren Green's success, Possum Lodge is now known as Possum Ponderosa. Right? <laughs> and I tell you, it's not just a moneymaker, it's a bonanza. <laughs> You all remember the village people? <laughs> We're just trying to enhance the Lauren Green experience by dressing up like characters from the shop. I didn't know Ben Cartwright had two jackasses. <laughs> We're his sons. Oh. Dalton is Haas. You're Haas? Yeah, very much so, oh. yes. He always had an air of quiet dignity. Well, you have an air of loud embarrassment. <laughs> I mean, who are you supposed to be, Liberace Cartwright? <laughs> No, I'm Little Joe. <laughs> little joke, maybe. You know, you should see Moose Thompson. He's Hop Sing. Yeah. <laughs> little light on the sing, little heavy on the hop. Yeah. Maybe this was a bad idea. Oh, no, 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 Uncle Ray. no, no. We already have 60 guests booked for the first Possum Ponderosa weekend. We got to make it look good. What? You get to be Ben Cartwright. Well, now you're talking. Okay, 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 okay. okay. You know, every year at the start of football season, the big question is, what do you do with the people who weren't picked? <laughs> so I thought we'd have a, a bit of a football competition there, and we had six footballs, and uh, I had put a couple initials on each one, so there was two with a D, two with a W, two with an M. And uh, so take the two with the D on there, no, the W, give those to Winston. Winston's job, he's gonna throw, his job, he's gonna be the passer. And I take the two with the Ds on him, and I give them to Dalton. Dalton's gonna be the punter, the kicker, the punter, the punter, the kicker. Give it a try there, give it a try there, Dalton. How, how, how is the back, anyway? Not good, not good, okay. And now Mike's challenge, he's gonna do like the place kicking off the little, I'm not sure Mike really grasped the whole concept of how that whole kicker stand, yeah, no, not, not. So anyway, so Wince is going to go first. So he uh, he does the YA tittle thing and then had to change his pants. And then he came out and, uh, and threw the football. And uh, not a bad, no, not a bad toss. Not bad, not bad. Okay, there's the W. And now, uh, now Dalton, your, your challenge. See if you can kick it farther than Winston threw it. Okay, okay. Careful on the back, now, Dalton. Careful, careful. There we go, there we go. Back okay, looks all right. No, no. Okay, and oh, and there, okay. Now, 
that's that's good. That's good. That's good. It's 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 not that much farther, though. All right. Now Mikey puts his on the tee there, and uh, he's gonna. Oh boy. Oh. Well, something he learned in prison, and then. Okay, so now they're they're all they're all pretty happy, but to me, I was a little disappointed in the overall quality of the competition. It's not like these were that far <laughs> down the field. So okay, so I'm saying you guys get one more ball each. Let's put a little extra into it. I'll get rid of this. Okay, so Winston has a ramp, and down he comes and just really lets it go. Oh, 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 boy, oh, we don't want to. We don't want to see the Winston. I can't even look at that. No, no, put that away. Put that away. Wow, I got to get fish this Friday. And then uh, Dalton uh, tapes a, a sledgehammer to the side of his leg. I'm not sure this is not completely legal. Give him a Lexter. Um, this is like the tungsten injected titanium golf club, but okay. It's a good kick, but there's a price to pay. So Mike decides uh, he's just gonna maybe overinflate the ball a little bit. He cranks the compressor up uh, well past the, the safe uh, zone, and uh, I don't know how big. It, oh, they go pretty big. Yeah, they go pretty big. So now I guess the idea is when he when he makes contact with that, she should take off. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Good. All right. Let her go. Let her go. And oh boy. Oh boy. And I think that that's the whole life. That's a that's a there's a field goal. Well, they, well, there's your win. Now, shake hands. Shake hands, everybody. Sh Come on, Mike. Be a good sport. Shake hands. Don't you? No, 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 no. All right. You just, well, I just said, uh, no, maybe, oh, no, maybe not. Okay. All right. All right. Don't worry, Dalton. We'll fix this. Yeah, no, I, I got it. Pepperoni, ground beef, ground pork, and extra cheese. You want a double bypass with that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's coming right up. Remember that game you used to play when you were a kid? No, not that game. The other one where you and a friend would see who could skip the stone the farthest out across the lake. Well, hold that thought. This is Stinky Peterson's island. They say no man is an island, but in Stinky's case, we're prepared to make an exception. <laughs> Actually, Stinky's away for a couple of weeks. He asked me to look after his business for him. Pizza delivery business. And Stinky's got a real unique way of getting them out to you. He sticks them in between a couple old wheel discs, and then he fires them out to you across the lake using that skeet thrower. He can only deliver to houses, you know, on the lake, but that prevents his business from getting so big he can't handle it. This pizza here is for Dalton's daughter, so I just gotta aim it at his place. Stinky calls it a pizzeria, but it could just easily be called a skeetzeria. <laughs> and every pizza comes with a guarantee. No more than 30 skips or it's free. <laughs> and pull! You've made yourself successful. So many friends to thank. It's good to have a life that's full, but not a septic tank. Come right in, come on in. All right. Well. <laughs> been that kind of a weekend. <laughs> uh, hit a few snags with our Ponderosa thing. Turns out our Lauren Green wasn't the real Lauren Green. We all got caught with our chaps down on that one. <laughs> but I find that whenever you pretend to be something that you're not, you get yourself into trouble, unless your company is publicly traded. But it's okay, it's okay. Everything's fine now. They dropped the charges. <laughs> Harold, I can't believe all those people were relatives of Lauren Green. Oh, no, they weren't. Oh. No, a lot of them were litigators. <laughs> yeah, they had some copyright infringement issues. Yeah. Yeah. Some licensing violations. Of course, there was, you know, that whole kerfuffle about whether or not livestock should be allowed in the restaurant. That was something we, we got over. 
to learn. You know, I, I felt that after I spoke to them, things kind of settled down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, once they heard you speak, boy, they realized we were doing it out of ignorance. <laughs> they were just trying to protect the reputation of Lauren Green, that's all. Yeah. And we did not mention Battlestar Galactica. No. They really appreciated that. Yeah. No, that's right. <laughs> that helped. Well, Harold, I, like what now? I mean, how are we going to promote the Lodge if we can't lie? <laughs> Well, how about we base the campaign on the, on the Lodge's natural beauty and serenity and, and of course, the, the majesty of Possum Lake. <laughs> We're so dead, We're aren't dead. we? We're so dead. <laughs> <laughs> Reading time. Yeah, you go ahead, Harold. Okay, I'll, I'll be right down. Okay. All right, good. <laughs> so if my wife is watching, uh, this old cow Polk will be blazing the trail straight home after the meeting. Today, I tried to be Lauren Green. I found out how tough it is to be a star. That's not gonna happen to me. I'm staying in Canada. <laughs> well, the best yet. Thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice, huh? <laughs>